this is a special YouTube version of Photo Walkthrough episode 131. In today's show we're going to continue looking at Lightroom 3 and trying to help you decide whether or not it's a worthwhile upgrade for you. Today we're going to take a look at the Flickr upload feature and the import dialog which has been moved around and improved. If you'd like to see more Photo Walkthrough shows they're all available for free at photowalkthrough.com where you can subscribe to re receive them free whenever they're published. Okay let's get on with today's show. Hello, we're back to take another look at the brand new version of Lightroom, that's Lightroom 3, and the plan is to look at some features and help you decide for yourselves whether or not it's a worthwhile upgrade. Today I'm going to be taking you through two new features, we've got a brand new import dialog, and I want to show you the Flickr upload options, and generally the uh, the export and uh, publish features, the publish service in the new versions. So let's take a look at the brand new import feature, which I can get to with Command Shift I, or of course uh, it will open automatically when you connect a camera if you've got that option set up. Um, so here we are, this is the brand new import window um, which as you can see right away uh, is considerably tidied up from the old version. We've got uh, sort of three columns to it, so we've got a, a from column here and then we've got the photos that are that are going to be imported and a to column over here. So there's a sort of a natural flow to the import dialog here and we've got on the left the various sources that are available so in this case we can see that my iPad's connected and that's what we're looking at the photos from here. Uh, and we've also got folders here that we can use to import photos that maybe are already on your computer's hard drive. So um, I could go to pictures there and choose some pictures from my own hard drive if I want. But let's stick with the, with the iPad here and we've got a couple of various different views here at the top. Um, we've got all photos or new photos so you can see if I click that some of the photos that were there um, have already been imported. Uh, we of course can change the size of our thumbnails here if we want to get more on and scroll up and down. Now we've also got a destination folders button here um, which at the moment won't do anything but if I go over here to the destination se uh, output section and choose organize by date then this destination folders view will actually break up the photos that are available to us into the various dates that they were uh, created on. So I think that's a pretty useful little view and you can see actually in this case it's doing a couple of different pages. Um, so I think that's quite a useful view if you wanted to say well I know all the photos I import I want to import were taken you know on one or two days and you can just tick all the stuff on that day by doing that destination folders view. So jumping over to the right hand column we've got um, all the same sort of features that were available in Lightroom 2 and Lightroom 1. We've got some file handling options here. We can say how big we want the rendered previews to be. Uh, we can avoid importing duplicates and if we wish we can have it automatically back up a second copy of what's imported to an external drive. Quite a common feature if you're uh, working in, a, in a, um, a professional environment and you want to make sure that everything that comes into your, into your lab um, gets backed up onto maybe an external backup drive somewhere. Uh, we've got file renaming options here. Um, it happens that I don't tend to use those, but if you want to, you can set uh, renamed uh, uh, file names there as a sort of a template with a custom name and a shoot name and whatever. Um, We've also got uh, the option to uh, use develop settings on import, just like we could in previous versions, and add metadata on import and keywords, just like we would before. Um, and then, of course, we've got the, the standard stuff for where we'd like the files to go. And in this case, you can see we've got uh, my Macintosh hard drive is there. We've got the Drobo there. And uh, we've got the ability here, if I go into photos, you can see we've got a lot of folders on that Drobo there. If we want to tidy up this view a little bit we can say doc folder and it will simplify down and just show us that one folder that we want to look at. So a couple of ways of tidying up the view here but there is one more neat trick up the sleeve of the import dialog and that is um, the import presets. You can see down here at the moment we've got import presets set to none. Um, now if I wanted to I could create a preset and you can see I already have I've created an iPad preset which if I choose it changes what we're looking at now we've got the device still on iPad but you can see it set up the outputs folder here to iPad and I could have it set up uh, metadata and file renaming and all the rest so we've got these import 
presets now. So if you're regularly importing from maybe a, a, a single device and you always want those files to go into a particular folder, or maybe you're uh, um, always wanting to import things into a particular arrangement of folders, maybe you sort your folders by the date they were taken, then you can set up that preset and you can in fact use this button down here to shrink that window down so that it's ultra simple. We've just got where are the pictures coming from, that device, where are they going to, have that set in the import preset and click the import button and off you go. That will just do everything the same way every time. So uh, um, a couple of nice new features there on the import dialog and uh, all ma mainly the same features but I just think a nice uh, rearrangement of the features so that they make a lot more sense and I do think that import uh, presets feature is jolly useful. Um, now we've also got another new feature that I want to quickly show you today which is um, the Flickr upload feature which is part of the new published services uh, and you can see we've also got a hard drive published service here um, I can tell you also that in the new version of uh, Lightroom 3.2 which uh, is in pre-release at the moment um, I think we can expect to see a Facebook um, export uh, feature in the published services and uh, I think Jeffrey Friedel has got um, a bunch of other export services for Smug Mug and Picasso Web and all sorts of other features. So uh, these published services are going to become uh, available as downloads and at the moment you get with Lightroom the hard drive and Flickr published service. So you can see here I've already got my Flickr published service set up but if I go in and choose edit settings we've got this publishing manager window. You can see we've still got the, the hard drives thing there that I haven't configured yet. Um, but in Flickr um, I've set up a description, so my user on Flickr, um, and I needed to click this login button. Uh, just like many other Flickr integrated applications, it needed to go and authorize with Flickr. Um, I believe that's using OAuth. It's a it's a good secure s system that they use. Um, and then I can set up how I always want the f the photographs to get uploaded to Flickr through this to be handled. So I can say, well, I want the 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 title of the image to be used if there is one, and if not, then use the file name. Um, I can say that I always want to rename the files into a particular format. Um, I can say that I always want the photographs to be an 85% quality JPEG and I can say that I want them to be always no bigger than 800 pixels on a side which is something that you might want to consider doing if you're concerned about your photographs getting uh, taken from Flickr and used without your permission which does I'm sorry to say definitely happen from time to time. So if you're concerned about protecting your images um, make sure that the versions you upload to somewhere like Flickr, a public site like Flickr, are shrunk to a size that is less useful than the full size version. Um, I happen to like a little bit of screen sharpening since I'm doing a resize there. I think a little sharpening just helps to keep that uh, that sharpness on the image. Uh, if you've been watching the show a while, you'll know that I'm not big on a lot of sharpening. So uh, that is quite a gentle sharpening that that does. Um, we can embed metadata and write keywords into the metadata if we wish. And we've got a watermarking option, which is jolly nice. So when you come to uh, add, upload your photos to uh, Flickr, you can have it automatically add a watermark. Now you can see I've set up my own special watermark there. If I go into edit watermarks, we can set what the text should be here. Um, and we can say, right, well, um, we want uh, various uh, text options with fonts and styles and alignment. And we can change how the shadow looks. Uh, and we can also set what opacity we want and how big we want the uh, the watermark to be. So if we change that proportional size there, you can see that the size of the copyright is changing. And we can even fit that to the width of the image if we wish. Um, I like it a little bit smaller than that, a little bit more out of the way. And uh, we can just move it uh, in relation to the corner we've chosen. So if we wanted top left, we could do that. If we wanted it in a bit, we can do that. And um, we can also rotate these if we want. So we've got lots of options there for making the, the watermark look up the way we like. And finally, we've got um, the standard flicker options here for making a photograph public and uh, setting the safety level to say it's safe or adult or whatever it is. Um, and of course, most of the photographs that I upload are photo types rather than screenshots. So I have that set to photo. Um, so once you've got that all set up, you can come into here. Um, I've now got some photos here that uh, were taken in France, mostly pictures of Catherine. And uh, you can see that it, I've got a, um, a Catherine in France collection set up here. I created that by right-clicking on that Flickr 
export setting that I got there and cre using create photo set um, and these work just like collections in, in uh, Lightroom so you can just drag and drop photos onto them so you can see if I drag and drop that photo onto the Catherine in France section if I click on it now um, I've got new photos to publish and I've got some existing photos that are already published and uh, better still not only do these get published to Flickr, I'll show you that in just a moment, but we've also got here, if I click on this photo, um, if I scroll down in the right-hand column, we've actually got comments synchronizing with Flickr here. So if you want to just update those comments, you can click this little update button here, and any new comments that have been added will be imported here, and you can see those comments right here in Lightroom. And if you wish, you can even reply. So reply to... Uh, comment and there we go and that's added here and that will be synchronized up to Lightroom so into Flickr so those comments uh, are move both ways um, so once we've got this uh, all set up uh, we can hit the publish button and that will start to upload the photographs to to uh, Flickr the other thing I wanted to say is uh, these things are sort of a live connection into Flickr so the fact that they're here means that if I wish, I can click on one of these, make some changes in the develop module, and then republish them, and it will update the file that's on Flickr with the new version. It won't upload a new version to Flickr, it'll actually upload over the top of the one that was already there, if you see what I mean. So it understands that this particular upload is connected to an existing file on Flickr, and it knows where to publish back to if something changes. And that's not just changes to the picture either. If you wanted to change the title, or if you wanted to change the keywords, all sorts of information, that will, when you republish, it will be written back to Flickr into the same file that was that was already there so you're not going to end up with lots of duplicates on Flickr it understands how Flickr is constructed and uh, and works with that which I think works extremely well I mean uh, if you're looking for a way of making your photographs public online somewhere and you don't want to have to think about making sure that they're always the right size and whether or not you've got the right metadata in there and whether or not maybe you keyworded them before you uploaded them and uh, the way it used to work you used to have to do this with the export dialog and you needed to remember where they were and go in and manually overwrite them and stuff this just takes care of the whole process for you and um, the same sort of features available for uh, exporting to the hard drive if you wish you can set up standard export so maybe you've got a um, a standard way of exporting images maybe you put your photos on your iphone or something um, and you want to always have uh, the latest photographs uh, uploaded to your iPhone. You could set a folder on here, which is where your iPhone folders photo, photos go, and you can set a stand file up, up uh, renaming or um, set the file size to a certain size so you don't fill your phone up. Uh, and you can just set up a, a variety of export services there um, so that whenever you drop a, drag and drop a new photo in, hit the publish button, away they go, and everything is done for you. Naming, resizing, where it goes on the hard disk, everything is handled for you. That's a jolly useful service and, and I think that's one of my favourite new features in Lightroom 3. So I'm going to leave it up to you whether or not you think those features are uh, a good reason to upgrade. Um, but uh, thank you very much for watching. I've got one more show that I want to show you with new features in Lightroom 3 and I've also got a bunch of new tutorials I want to show you. So keep watching. Thank you very much. I'll see you soon. This video is an extract from Photo Walkthrough, an online video show about photography and digital photo editing using Photoshop and Lightroom. If you'd like to see more, you can find all the old shows and subscribe to the new ones for free at photowalkthrough.com.